There has been intense public debate about the nature of reality. Some philosophers, like Nick Bostrom, argue that future civilizations will be capable of running computer simulations in such vast numbers that the probability of us existing within one of these simulated universes is extremely high. According to this hypothesis, our world is akin to a computer game, a simulation of a reality populated by conscious beings. It operates on a computational system that exists outside our perceived universe. This is not merely an abstract idea, multiple pieces of evidence suggest its plausibility. Any computer hardware leaves artifacts within the simulation it runs. For instance, a computer has a processor speed that imposes a limit on the maximum speed of all objects within its simulated environment. Similarly, in our universe, we observe a fundamental speed limit, the speed of light, restricting how fast anything can travel. Furthermore, any simulation must be built upon fundamental units of information, much like pixels on a screen or bits in a digital system. A striking parallel emerges in our own reality. When we examine matter at its smallest scales, it appears pixelated, manifesting as indivisible elementary quanta. Paradoxes in quantum mechanics can also be interpreted through the lens of the simulation hypothesis. For example, quantum entanglement, where two particles instantaneously affect each other, regardless of distance, may serve as evidence. In a simulated reality, such interactions could occur through direct manipulation of information in the underlying code, rather than through transmission across simulated space. This hypothesis even provides a potential explanation for the Fermi paradox, the apparent absence of extraterrestrial civilizations. This universe may have been created specifically for us. Other civilizations exist in other simulations, entirely inaccessible from our own. This intended isolation could prevent interference from far more advanced civilizations, ensuring that our simulation develops naturally, without external disruptions. The numerical patterns and natural laws that we observe could be traces of a grand design. They cannot appear on their own in a simulated reality. They must be designed long before the code begins to render the realm of this universe. We also discuss strange events, such as coincidences in people's lives, often referred to as synchronicities. These phenomena cannot be explained by the natural processes of the simulated world, where time flows from past to future. However, they may be understood as alterations in the underlying programming code, bypassing the limitations of the flow of time. Some argue that the simulation hypothesis is not the ultimate explanation because it does not address the question of who is running the simulation. Are they simulated too? However, this argument is misplaced. While there are aspects of this assumption we do not yet understand, this does not negate the possibility that our universe operates within a simulation. If there is evidence for a profound phenomenon, one cannot rule out its explanation simply because we do not understand its ultimate goal or origin. The core question of the simulation hypothesis is not just about the nature of our reality, but about who we truly are. Are we beings with independent consciousness or merely lines of code? Are we nothing more than programming instructions destined to be deleted at the end of our lifespan, discarded like files in a trash folder by the designer? Many philosophers of science, including theoretical physicist Roger Penrose, argue that consciousness is not a purely computational phenomenon. The active participants in this simulation possess something that extends far beyond the simulation itself. They have self-awareness and consciousness. While they may employ computational elements to integrate their minds and bodies into the game's actions through programming codes, their decision-making is not rooted in computation. Instead, it arises from the self-awareness of their souls. Only beings with consciousness can perceive why certain things are true, moral, or beautiful without relying on computations to prove such notions. Here is the question. If our planet has over 8 billion people, are they all active participants? Or could many of them be non-playable characters, NPCs, much like those in video games? Characters that are not controlled by any player, but merely programmed to interact within the world? Could they be bots designed to challenge players, creating obstacles and tests to refine the skills and decision-making of real players? 
In the digital realm, we already deal with internet bots, and we have learned how to identify them. They lack meaningful activity beyond their intended functions. They do not exhibit self-awareness, curiosity, or independent will. They merely respond to their environment without deeper introspection. Similarly, in real life, one might recognize NPC-like individuals by observing inconsistencies in their behavior. They may resemble humans in appearance and routine, but their depth of thought is shallow. They do not ask profound questions, nor do they seek knowledge beyond what is necessary for survival. Their freedom of will, moral principles, sense of beauty, and what is true or false are rooted in pure computations. There is a simple way to test this idea without directly interacting with the subject of events. Just try to determine whether there are any inconsistencies in the way the events unfold. For example, imagine a grocery store with a sales clerk, yet no customers ever seem to enter. The business appears unsustainable and incapable of supporting his livelihood. If it continues to exist for many years, despite all logic, could this person be something that only seems real? Dividing people into players and NPCs presents serious moral dilemmas, much like the flawed categorizations of people throughout our history. But the ethical concerns may be avoided if such distinctions are fluid. Perhaps real players, those with true consciousness, inhabit bodies temporarily, merging with their memories during deep sleep. Could the process of sleep be a mechanism for reloading consciousness into different bodies to provide a broader range of experiences? Indeed, science remains puzzled by the true purpose of deep sleep. Could it be a rebooting mechanism for game players? If this world is a simulation, an even more radical conclusion arises. Places and people may not exist beyond the spotlights of your attention. What would they be doing when unobserved? What would be the purpose of rendering every small detail if you're not interacting with it? A far more intriguing question remains. Who are the real players? Are you one of them at this very moment as you watch this video? The answer is yours to determine. If you are drawn to existential questions that go beyond mere survival, that may be a sign that this moment in your life is more than just a scripted sequence of code. Perhaps there are billions of simulations designed to explore different patterns of events in order to determine the optimal conditions for advancing civilizations. Or perhaps these simulations are designed to advance beings who are beyond our comprehension or even by an ultimate entity that transcends the very concept of civilization as we understand it. But one thing is certain. If we are in a simulation, it must exist for the benefit of someone experiencing our lives through us. The final question remains, who are they?